Good evening folks, take two, Everyday KT number 15, kilts and the TSA. So a couple hours, or about an hour ago maybe, uh, I posted up a request for ideas. What do you guys want to hear about? Got some really good ones. Uh, friends over at Cash a lot wanted to know about kilting in a kilt. Someone asked about kilt pins. One person missed Everyday KT number 13, what do you wear under the kilt, so of course I directed them over to the old video. Um, there were a couple of other really good ones. One, which stood out and I thought would be amazing, was, you know, what, how did I get into kilts? When did I first wear the kilt? And, you know, the history of m me and kilts and all that. And uh, I thought about doing it and then I realized that th that video would make a audio of War and Peace look short. So, I decided we're going to talk about TSA, Flying While Kilted. So I've probably flown a dozen or so times. Uh, I've got some, some decent experience with that. So the first thing is always expect to get pulled out of line. Doesn't matter where you're flying into or out of. If they have a TSA, they have security checkpoints to get onto the airplane, just expect to get pulled out and searched by hand. It has been 100% of the time I have been pulled out of line and searched. Now, were it legitimate reasons or something a little more nefarious on the TSA agent's parts? Who knows? But when you've got five girls in uniform blushing at you, you know, just go with it. Um, second, uh, doesn't matter what kilt you're wearing, try to make sure it has as little metal as humanly possible. The more metal that you have on your kilt, the longer the search is going to take and the longer you're going to be sitting there waiting in line. If you have a homemade kilt, there's a couple companies out there that do it as well, where it's all plastic and it's like nylon webbing for the belts and there's no metal at all, awesome. Wear one of those. Um, I have flown with traditional kilts like the one I'm wearing. I've flown with my old school utility uh, utility kilt. Um, got pulled out of line every time. Um, I, most of the time I'd fly with the utility kilt uh, just because of the convenience. There's no sporing to mess around with and you got all the pockets and you just go. So I recommend if you don't have one that has no metal at all a utility style kilt uh, just because it's all right there. Uh, if you want to fly with your tartan kilt, your traditional style kilt with your spore and all of your kit and everything else go for it. You're going to get a ton of attention. It will be fun. You may score some free drinks on the airplane. I know I did once or twice. but just be aware that you're carrying an awful lot of metal so you have to be careful and uh, Nathan just reminded me sport kilt there's no metal in a sport kilt throw that on and you're good to go just keep be mindful that the belt and the sport you're gonna have to take those off when you go through the checkpoint and have to empty those out for the agents so they'll want to know what's in there um, knives skeins uh, any of that kind of stuff pretty much a no-no just pack them, and you're going to cause all kinds of trouble with you, for, for yourself. Uh, you don't want those in your sock or whatever when you get on the plane. So just stow those in your bag, check them in, put them in there. Kilt pins also, going to cause you a headache. Um, the one or two times I had a kilt pin, I would take it off before I got to the checkpoint, put it in my sporn, send it through that way, and have to explain what a kilt pin is and all of that other crap. So the fewer accessories, the better. Hence the utility style kilt. Just throw it on, wear a belt, and everything else goes in your bags to check in. So, oh, Chris has a question. Oh yeah, hot air ballooning in a kilt. I've not tried that one. That that might be uh, that might be interesting, but it's not something that uh, is on my radar just yet. I don't have a hot air balloon. So again, TSA, avoid metal at all costs. Utility style kilt if you can. If you can't. Sport something else with minimal metal, no kilt pins, you know, and no knives. All that stuff gets packed. Got any questions? Just ask. It's KT with Everyday KT, and I forgot to do today's Kiltology. My girlfriend picked out today's Kiltology, and it is number out of volume volume one is number seventy one. Whilst shoveling snow in a kilt. Be ever mindful of snow plows. Icy mush coming off the plow's blade is hell on the legs. Worse, it happens to go up the kilt. I wrote this 
because I experienced it. It sucks. If you're out shoveling snow in your kilt and there's a plow coming down the road, get the hell off the side of the road because it sucks. Bungee jumping in a kilt, not recommended. Can be done. Not something I have. I have seen it done. I do not recommend it. Something about all the, the gear that you got to put on gets kind of in the way. Anyway, so that you have it. Everyday KT number 15, all about how to fly with your kilt. Now, one thing I didn't mention that I, 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 I regret not saying earlier, <clears throat> there is one huge benefit to wearing a kilt on an airplane, is that uh, people get out of your way really fast. And when you're on the plane, actually it's two benefits. When you're on the plane, more often than not, the, um, the magical drink fairy happens to show up a lot more often than not. So just keep those in that in mind when you're uh, when you're flying in a kilt, especially long distance flights. Um, make friends with the stewards and stewardesses because uh, they will they'll they'll be your best friends. So that's it. Have a good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow and uh, let me know what you want to hear about for tomorrow. Uh, maybe we can get some interesting stuff. Maybe who knows? Whatever you guys want to hear about, let me know. Talk to you later. Be strong. Put kilt on.